to Running Wild. I'm Callie May and today we're back in Paradise Wildlife Park having a look at how the park works and some of the animals in it. In this week's episode... We'll be meeting with the penguins, hanging out with the white lions and taking a look at the tapir's behaviour. Right now we are outside the tapir enclosure. The family that you see behind me are originally from Brazil in South America. The tapir's habitat is surrounded by grassy areas and has a sense of freedom. In Paradise Wildlife Park, they have matched their habitat to their original surroundings. The tapir are one of the largest mammals in the park with a heavy body weighing around 320 kilograms as a grown adult. That's about four times heavier than an adult human being. The main feature on the tapir is their snout, which is long and flexible, which helps their sense of smell and how they manage to stay alive. They use their noses to reach for their food in the trees that grow around them. They have adapted well to their surroundings over a long period of time. There are many different types of parrots that live here at the park. For example, the blue and gold muskie, the blue fronted Amazon parrot, and one we have here, the African grey. The parrots we see are also herbivores, and their diet includes fruits, buds, flowers, nuts, and seeds. Parrots are one of the main attractions in the park due to the vibrant colours of their feathers. They are eye catching for the visitors, and they are sociable birds that will often interact with passers by. As you can see, the parrots are quite happy to sit here and watch the visitors, just as much as we watch them. These colourful birds that you can see behind me are usually found living in forested areas, but can sometimes be found living near suburban areas as a source for food. In their daily diet, they eat any seeds and a variety of fruit. These white tigers you see behind me originate from India and Nepal. They're rarely seen in the wild. Over the past 100 years, only 12 have been seen in India. Along with the Bengal tiger, the white tiger is considered to be the second largest species of tiger in the world after the Siberian tiger. Although the range of the white tiger is historically very large, these animals are incredibly rare as their coloration is dependent on a defective recessive gene that is passed on from their parents. These African penguins usually feed on small fish such as anchovies, sardines and mackerel. As you can see, these penguins are smaller than Antarctic penguins as they are bred in Africa, which is a hot continent, so they do not need as much blubber as the average penguin because they do not need to keep us warm. This penguin at the park is called Albert. He was brought to the zoo in October 2010 and he is the youngest. When Albert first got introduced to the pack, they were a bit wary of him and they left him out a lot. But now he's become one of the family as time's gone on. Otters are part of the weasel family and are very playful and intelligent creatures. Whilst they look very cute though, they are carnivores and could give you a really nasty bite. These animals are usually found at locations such as riverbanks as they are agile and quick swimmers. They are carnivores and their diets consist mostly of monkey seeds and shellfish. The otters here live in a healthy habitat and have all the resources as they would in the wild. 
Hello, and today we're here with Callum, who is the otter expert. So Callum, what are the otter's diets like? Um, they vary uh, depending on what food we've got available. We get all of our frozen food in from a special company. Um, they're mainly carnivores, so they'll eat mice, chicks, fish. We give them monkey nuts, even though we know, even though we know they're not monkeys. Um, <laughs> we give them fruits and berries, um, cut up rats. Um, so fish, fish only makes up about a third of their diet, so they're quite... Um, not fussy eaters, should I say, but they're quite greedy when they want to be. <laughs> Does it change in like the different seasons, like summer and winter? Um, as it's coming up to winter, so autumn sort of months, we'll try and bulk feed them, uh, give them all meat, tend not to give them the sort of fruits and berries and nuts because that's only sort of slim pickings out in the wild. Um, tend to give them more fish coming up to winter because that's what they used to. Um, but like I said, any food that's available, we don't mind giving it to them during the winter, summer, autumn or um, spring. So it's mainly the harsh winter they can deal with sort of not getting the, having the right food during the summer um, so it's really just the winter we just bulk their food up what kind yeah. of animals they like like they're active or are they lazy or uh, uh, they're quite food orientated to be fair uh, like they are today when i fed them or when matt fed them um, they were fed and then they've gone straight back inside because they're bored um, when they see the food <laughs> when they see us walking they recognize our um, keys our um, the silver bowl our uniform so they're quite active like that but like most animals they'll sleep during the night time uh, in the morning when we come in and try and clean them and feed them they're a little bit lazy um, but they are quite greedy when they want to be um, and they all have their individual personalities they're just look the same so I can't really tell <laughs> <laughs> and what are their appearances like uh, they've got two layered fur uh, the top layer is like a waterproof mat for us um, so it keeps them uh, dry when they're going to get wet or when they're in the pool um, and the layer underneath is like an insulating layer so it keeps them warm cools them down when they're hot and warms them up when they're too cold um, they're covered in fur apart from their tail which is just a long streamlined bit of muscle um, which they use as a rudder in the water um, and they're the only species of otter um, <coughs> that have fully webbed feet as well most other species is only sort of half webbed um, so it makes them quite good for gripping their food and for swimming in the water as well and being carnivorous they've got pretty sharp teeth which is why we're not allowed in with them because um, we come back all <laughs> our fingers so yeah I think that's pretty much yeah. all you want to know about the otters if you thank you very questions. much Callum the otters are one of the other main attractions at the park just like the penguins people love to come watch their playful attitudes The lifespan of a pygmy goat is usually about 10 years, but if they're being cared for properly like these ones in the park, they can usually live up to 15 years old. You might think that these small stumpy animals are baby lambs, but in fact they're miniature goats known as pygmy goats. I know you're thinking, what good is a goat that size? Due to their small height of 40 centimetres, they are allowed to be kept as pets and they settle into any climate. These specific pygmy goats come from Cameroon in South Africa. Once pygmy goats become more popular, they started to be kept by private owners and presented as unique and fashionable pets. Mama sets apart the monkey family and here at the park, you can see this family of very lively, cute and very active creatures. Marmosets are found in the upper Amazon in areas like Peru, Brazil and other hot countries. Pygmy marmosets live 11 to 12 years in the wild, but in zoos they live into the early 20s. It is one of the smallest primates and the smallest true monkey with its body length ranging from 14 to 16 centimetres and males weighing on 140 grams. When they are scared or an intruder comes into their area, they attempt to scare away the intruder by pulling funny faces and making loud noises at them. Some silvery marmosets may never touch the ground. In only rare circumstances would they, for example if trying to climb to another tree. These common marmosets what you see behind me are very popular throughout Brazil. A female can produce approximately 40 offspring in her entire lifespan. These are commonly born as non-identical twins. The male marmoset usually look after these twins. As well as there being animals 
tools at the park. There are also many facilities what the visitors could use. For example, Crazy Sand Golf and On Safari Adventure Golf. There are facilities for children such as the Bouncy Castle. A tiny Tots Arcade for the younger children. Choo -choo! Playgrounds. There are also many different places to eat at Paradise Wildlife Park. For example, Safari Sam's Diner. Hello, can I have a little Coming up on next week's show. That's all we have time for today, I'm afraid. I hope you've enjoyed yourself at Paradise Wildlife Park. Next week, Luke and Robin will be here to show you around the park and to introduce you to some more exciting animals. But for me, it's bye for now.